If you still weren't sure, let me confirm things for you. Season 9 is a season of DPS. Even though there are some outliers like Sigma and Diva, or Zenata and Lucio, basically every damage hero is significantly better. They're so much better that we're starting the tier list at C tier. It's pretty insane how even the worst DPS are way more viable this patch. And although he's a lot better, Junkrat is at the bottom of the list. Still in C tier, Junkrat is now way better in duels, and his spam across range connects a lot more. The problem is that he can't two-shot, not with two primary fire direct hits, and not even with his primary fire in the concubine combo. It means that flanking is a lot less effective, forcing you to mostly just spam chokes with your grenades. Junk puts up good spam numbers, but it's also really easy to force him out if he's playing far away. You'll be hitting more shots for sure, but confirming kills is up to your team. Even though some heroes are definitely worse, you can still get a lot of value if you learn how to play them to the fullest. So make sure to use the link in the description for a Game Leap membership if you want to grind even harder. There are tons of courses and guides all available across all roles, and even for improving your mindset for the game, which is definitely key in focusing on just winning, and also for taking advantage of the new patch. Next up is Widowmaker. She's also lost a lot of her burst damage, although she can still one-shot. But because of the health buffs combined with her falloff nerf from Season 5, anyone outside of 45 meters won't instantly die to a fully charged headshot. For Widowmaker, that's a pretty big handicap since a lot of your best angles are around that distance. Widow players are going to have to get used to going for double taps now, especially against Zenyatta and Lifeweaver who now both have 275 HP. She also got the smallest health buff, without the mobility of Tracer to make up for it. Most of the DPS are 250 health, and Widowmaker is still at 200. With all the projectiles and damage buffs being made for the new norm of 250 HP, she can and easily die in less than a second if caught off guard. And just like that, we're already at B tier, and although she's the third worst DPS, Farah feels a lot better. She's very different, and definitely not overpowered even with her massive stockpile of mobility. She's still a big target in the sky, and Mercy isn't that good with her anymore. She can't take advantage of Farah's high flying now that she's got more horizontal movement. But on her own, Farah can do a lot. An extra mobility cooldown makes both engaging and disengaging much easier, and for a slow hero like Farah, it makes her a lot less vulnerable. Her damage is really good but still just shy of two tapping with direct hits, but at least with her fire rate buff, three rockets come up pretty quickly. Moving on to Bastion, he's still the primo hero for melting tanks, but now that the power is back to DPS, Bastion's big hitbox is way more of a weakness. He's always been bad at dueling other long range DPS, and now it's way worse, even with the extra health. But again, he's still in B tier. He's a solid pick and his recon form is really accurate. With bigger bullets, you can totally get picks cross map without even entering your turret form. It took a while, but now Sombra is in B tier, even though her basic hack ability is really lackluster. It's easy to forget that Sombra damage is actually really strong right now. 160 DPS with her primary fire is only 11 less than Soldier 76's rifle. Now add a setup with invisibility and the heal reducing passive and you can probably get a lot of kills just by unstealthing and unloading your mag. Her EMP is also really good. Summer can be a really top tier hero, but half of her kit is still really clunky. Her hack takes more time to come out than it's worth and her translocator is still very easy to chase. She has a big enough hitbox that she really gets blasted by those bigger bullets. Into the top 3 of B tier we've got Torbjorn. He gets the best and the worst from the projectile buffs. His choke spamming playstyle is even more reliable, but his square hitbox makes him a walking bullseye, with his head right in the middle. His ultimate isn't too strong when everyone is playing really far away, but it gives him close range control to complement the range spam he has. And in a patch where dive heroes are tankier, Torb's turret is a great defense tool, and also applies heal reduction. You can help your supports a lot, even if you're nowhere near them. B tier is really for the big hitbox heroes that still find a way to be strong, despite taking a lot more damage than before. Reaper is up next, but 300 health is a lot to play with. Taking damage before the fight is the biggest hurdle to overcome, but flanking is now a lot stronger. And even though focusing the tank isn't always the right move in Season 9, now that Reaper can deal maximum shotgun damage at longer distances, it's also easier to get the lifesteal momentum going. Even though Reaper is a really clumsy flanker, he's a serious force to be reckoned with. But even with increased range, he's still easy to distance yourself from, and still unplayable on a lot of maps. Next is Mei, at the top of B tier, and she's as close to a second tank as she'll ever be. Even with the big hitbox, her icicles are beastly when it comes to trading against long range DPS, and now you'll be hitting more headshots. Even though she's primarily a close range initiator with her ice wall slow, her icicles allow her to play for long fights if she needs to. A hero that always needs to go in to get value is a predictable one. But even so, Mei can't compete with the stronger range spam. She has the same problem Bastion does. In long range duels, she's always easier to hit than her opponent. Even if you have an ice block and an ice wall to spend, they're better suited for committing to close range instead. Now we're up to A tier, starting with Echo. She's only held back by her big hitbox. Her abilities and damage are all better than good enough for this patch, especially Focusing Beam. Her duplicate is also way easier to farm ultimates with. Tracer copies can actually get a lot of pulse bombs out. The bigger bullet buff is insane with the increased ultimate charge rate. That big Big hitbox really stings though. Echo still has insane burst damage, but she has to put herself in danger to commit the kills. So saving duplicate for a second life is as good as ever. But now it's time to get into the really big winners of this patch. Next up is Symmetra, who's always been strong with extra health. It doesn't even matter that everybody else has it too, because it allows her to play right up next to her tank, taking space by building beam charge. Teleportation is also always going to be super strong, even if it's massively underutilized and ranked. Sim as a hero has a lot going for her, even her turrets can control flanks of their own. But this season you need to handle long range engagements, and Sim is still a very mid range hero. She only has her secondary fire for long range, which no longer two taps. Hitting three fully charged shots at further than 20 meters isn't really something you can control. You either have to quantum predict their movement or hope they run into that third shot after tanking two already. Further up in A tier is Genji. Almost all parts of his kit feel much better. His blade, poke damage, and survivability are all improved. 
Burst damage is down across the board, but Genji has always been opportunistic. His primary fire shurikens are expectedly way easier to hit, allowing you to soften up your enemies before committing with a dash shuriken melee. Hitting all three secondary fire stars makes for 171 burst damage, respectable mount in Season 9. Now for one of the most improved heroes of this patch, Cassidy. He's got 275 health, just enough to make up for his generous hitbox that includes his poncho. But when everyone's hitting their shots, double taps his cast are no exception. Deadeye is still really bad, but his mid-range neutral is unrivaled. Within 25 meters, you've got to respect him. Unfortunately though, any step outside of that range and the fall off is brutal. Cass is good for sure, but he still has his limits. So Cass is up, and although it's not by very much, Sojourn is down. She's obviously still A tier and super strong, but the projectile buffs have really evened the playing field. Her railgun shot only has a 1.5 times headshot multiplier, which means even if you hit fully charged rail headshots, your targets will still have at least 50 HP left. She's also dependent on the enemy tank to keep charging rail shots, and in this patch, they're either playing more careful or setting up dives from the flank. Even her hitbox advantage has been evened out. After they increased her torso hitbox size, she was still one of the skinnier heroes. Now she can't play as crazy aggro just because her hitbox is tough to hit. She may still have really good damage output, but she's actually outclassed by the other long range shooting guys, and also Tracer at the top of A tier. Tracer's damage is amazing this patch, and although she only got 25 extra health, it helps her survive a lot of one shots that took her out before. She still can't stay around as long when focused. More shots are gonna hit, and you have to be ready to escape, but a flanky hit and run playstyle is what Tracer is all about, and the region passive gets a lot of mileage during long flanks. Season 9 has changed so much that even Tracer doesn't dominate, even with more consistent damage. She's crazy good, but consistent range damage is the real winner for this patch, and the three heroes in S tier are ideal for both spam and picks. Starting off with Ash, even without the projectile buffs, her dynamite combined with the new heal reducing passive is massively valuable. She can easily handle rush comps with that one ability alone, and her overall damage output is top notch too. She reloads crazy fast nowadays, so she can multitask really well, spamming damage on the tank, eyeing the flank, and scoping in for headshots on the backline. Her head hitbox is still very massive, meaning she can't always take the sniper duel, but she's best when rotating around and looking for burst combos with your scope shots into hipfire. And thanks to the bullet size buffs, spamming your hipfire doesn't miss wildly anymore. Even up to 20 meters where the fall off damage starts, it's pretty easy to hit most shots. Even though Bob isn't amazing, none of the S tier DPS have insanely powerful ultimates. Their damage neutral is just so good this patch that just by existing, they can get picks from range. If you're not going for headshots, you're are missing out. And the next hero explains why Sojourn isn't the obvious choice this patch. While she has to charge her rail shots, Hanzo fires 120 damage logs every second. They've been doubled in size this patch. Even though Hanzo has been a one-shot headshot hero for most of the game, body shot arrows still do a hefty amount of damage, and upping Hanzo's consistency is like removing the shackles holding him back. He's also got one of the best buffs this patch. Outside of health and projectile buffs, most heroes got a slight damage buff to their ultimate or one of their abilities. Hanzo both got a 75 damage storm arrows back and a shorter cooldown. Two seconds off of a 450 damage burst ability is really nice for that damage uptime. Storm arrows give you a massive advantage in ranged duels, and the more often you have it, the more aggressive you can play. There's only one hero who's even better thanks to the changes, and it's Soldier 76. It seems like he's always good whenever the game changes drastically, but this patch, it's because his maximum damage output is now easily attainable by even diamond players. 171 DPS is legitimately the highest consistent DPS out of every hero in the game. For comparison, Symmetra's level 3 beam deals 180, only 9 more than Soldier's pulse rifle, and he's got a much higher effective range than 12 meters. And of course, with his healing station, he gets primo value from the extra 50 health. Even if 18 seconds is a crazy long cooldown, the region passive helps to stay in the fight while waiting for it to come back. Before, you had to totally trust your team if you wanted to keep fighting without it. Soldier this patch is really reliable. Helix Rocket still deals crazy burst, and with your pinpoint laser rifle shots, within 30 meters, you can get kills scary fast. That's it for the DPS tier list in Season 9. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.